So many of you guys are probably wondering when will the next major winter storm impact the northeast because of course many of the major cities along the northeast coast have are experiencing a severe snow drought where New York City right now is 7 inches below average at this point of the year and probably many of you guys are wondering when will we see those snowier and colder than average conditions return in right around the eastern half of the United States more simply the northeast and in this video we're going to take a look at the two compute models to answer that question let's first take a look at the European mall we're also going to take a look at several different factors such as uh, Pacific North At American oscillation as well as um, the North Atlantic oscillation as well which are two key patterns that play a big role in terms of determining what type a uh, winter you're bound to experience in the near future now let's take first take a look at the european mall so of course we have the snow pressure system moving through but it's mainly going to bring snow to the extreme interior portions of the northeast more simply the northern portion of maine so that won't really bring snow. so for most of the northeast it's pretty much only going to be a rain event and we do have a significant um, a significant jet stream dip just behind this old pressure system and we were talking about the possibility of this old pressure system maybe re-intensifying and maybe bringing some snow up along the larger population areas of the northeast and it and for the most part the, the European mall does not expect that to happen but we do see a little bit of snow right around the eastern portion of Massachusetts and Maine by the Sunday time frame so maybe around the Boston area you could experience a little bit of snow Fall, but I don't really expect it to be that major winter storm that I'm sure many of you guys were hoping for. But if we were to continue to move forward in the more long term future, so the reason why much of Northeast hasn't received a significant snowstorm or accumulating snowfall at all, such as New York City and Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., is because there's this persistent ridge that's built over eastern Canada at this time that's that's steering the jet stream further upwards that's creating a bump that's forcing a lot of low pressure systems to move northward by the time they approach the same longitude of the northeast so as a result the northeast mainly experiences the south the eastern portion of the so pressure system which of course is a warmer portion since the winds are coming from the south so as a result most of the low pressure systems that have been moving through the northeast have mainly brought a rain event to the northeast because there's this persistent ridge that's forcing the low pressure systems further northward as well as jet stream winds so much of the storm's trajectory move uh, moves well far to the north of the coastal northeast which is the reason why we haven't seen a significant snowstorm impact northeast and it seems like the european model does not expect that to change for the next two weeks which may be unfortunate for a lot of you snow lovers out there because we do see that this next solar pressure system that's like the build right around the midwestern portion of the United States, we still do see that the storm, the low pressure system moves a little bit too far north, and we mainly only see snow in the higher elevations of upstate New York and the extreme northern portions of upstate New York, and even moving to the next low pressure system. Now, there is maybe that possibility this could be our next snowstorm for the northeast if enough cold air is locked in place, but the European Mall still wants to bring uh, mainly a rain vent to the northeast, and considering the fact that a lot of the long term forecast models predict that it's likely going to be warmer than average to end the uh to end the month of January then where so it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to really say with confidence that maybe this could change into a snow event there's still a lot of days to really iron out the forecast because I'm going around um, at the time frame between Thursday and Friday of January 19th and 20th so there's still a lot of time for maybe the forecast to iron out and maybe there will be a little bit more cold air locked in place but the current trend just shows that it's likely going to be warmer than average for much of the eastern half of the United States for the rest of the month. So I'd say more likely than not, we're primarily going to experience rain events, but there might be that possibility of snow if we do see enough cold air locked in place, but take it with a major grain of salt. So it, let's say this whole pressure system isn't our next snow event. We do see some snow um, right around the northern portions of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, but the, the, those are all the same places that are, have already experienced plenty of snowfall this winter thanks to how far north they are but for much of the more populated areas in northeast such as the big cities you guys still have yet to receive any significant snowfall and there, and our next possibility could maybe be 
this low pressure system um, that would build right around January 22nd, where we do see that the European model wants to bring a pretty, uh, um, I'd say a pretty strong nor'easter just off the northeast and southeast coast, which could bring some heavy snowfall along the more populated areas of northeast. But this forecast goes around nine to 10 days out. So again, um, take it with a huge grain of salt as many times we've seen a scenario like this with this winter in fact where we see the computer model show a pretty significant snowstorm impacting the coastal northeast but then of course it eventually shifts its forecast and then we do see that it's mainly a rain event for the coastal northeast so this could very well be another one of those scenarios but we can't rule out this possibility so i'll keep you guys updated once we get a little bit more certainty with the forecast we're just gonna need to wait and see if there's gonna be enough cold air locked in place and see uh, the really the position of this ridge because if we see another powerful ridge build right around eastern canada then we're more likely to see this slow pressure system again move a little bit too far north to bring that cold air into the northeast for a significant snowstorm to occur we're gonna need to pay very close attention to that but i'll keep you guys update over the next several days let's now take a look at the gfs model so the GFS model is mainly pretty much mimicking what the European model is stating, pretty much forecasting most of the low pressure systems to move a little bit too far north to bring any major snowfall to the northeast. We of course do see some heavier snowfall on the back side of this low pressure system throughout portions of upstate New York, but beyond that point, we don't see really this next low pressure system off the northeast coast bring any sort of precipitation um, or any sort of snowfall, maybe in the extreme eastern portions of the of the cape cod area but that's um but it won't necessarily bring major snowfall and then we do see another low pressure system move eastward but again a little bit too far north and take a look at this next um, um potential snowstorm we do see that it's the gfs model when it comes to this next low pressure system that i was talking to you guys about with the european model between january 19th and 20th the gfs model wants to bring this low pressure system well further northward a lot earlier by the, um, where there's pretty much zero chance of snow in this scenario based on what the GFS model is forecasting and then beyond that point the GFS model also does expect a pretty similar jet stream dip to occur right around January 22nd but again the GFS model is a lot more is a lot more um, I'd say bias in bringing a pretty strong ridge just off the east coast so this low pressure system is even further to the west than what the European model is stating and as a result brings pretty much an entirely a rain event for much of northeast besides of course the interior north um, portions of the northeast so right as of right now it um, at least for the near future and even going into the more long-term future such as the for, pretty much for the entirety of January it does seem like there's going to be a lot of likely chances of snow mainly because both of the computer models expect a pretty strong ridge to just persist throughout the month of January and and you're probably wondering could this change as we approach the month of february so if we were to go even more into the long term future we do see that the gfs model um what's very interesting is that it, the gfs model once we end january wants to bring a very significant jet stream dip to much of the united states where we even see very cold temperatures move as far south as um, california and the, um, texas as well gets involved but we still do see a pretty big bump in the jet stream as a result of this ridge still persisting right around the northeast we're gonna need to wait and see if this jet stream dip will move eastward into february and since it's been so quiet for January it's hard to believe that it'll be this quiet for February when it comes to the winter so there's very well that possibility that this jet stream dip will move to the east coast as we approach February so um, let's now take a look at other factors that will determine how the rest of the winter will turn out so right now we're in a positive Pacific North American pattern, which means that we're more likely to see jet stream dips for the eastern half of the United States. However, thanks to the fact that there's a big ridge built over eastern Canada, we haven't really seen those big jet stream dips necessarily move into the northeast. And this Pacific North American pattern is expected to persist even into early February. And I'd say for most of February before eventually changing over to a negative phase as we approach March. So there's still 
easily that possibility we could see a significant enough jet stream dip to uh, bring a uh, major snowstorm to the northeast as we approach february we're just gonna need to see if that ridge that's um that's built over eastern canada will move away from northeast and see that jet stream dip move far east enough to bring that the colder and snowier than average conditions to northeast because the pacific um, North American pattern will be there, but we need to determine if that ridge will be there as we approach February. Now take a look at the North Atlantic oscillation. So we're likely going to stay in a positive phase as we um, end the month of January. So for the most part, we're less likely to experience as significant jet stream dips thanks to the fact that we're in a positive Atlantic oscillation phase. However, as we approach mid-February, we do see that we're closer to neutral and even negative at times. And if we're in the negative phase for long enough combined with the fact that we'll be in a positive pacific north american oscillation then we could be in for very cold um very cold temperatures for the much of the united states including the northeast and we could be and that could of course enhance the chance that we do experience a major snowstorm this winter so i do expect that february will be a more active month and that will likely be the month we'll see um, a major snowstorm impact the, the northeast so january while it looks very warm as of right now um i don't expect that to last into the month of february so in terms of my forecast one will experience our next major winter storm for the coastal northeast and i do believe that in january it's going to be a little bit difficult to receive that major snowstorm but i do believe that by february thanks to the fact that a uh, negative north atlantic oscillation is expected to build as well as the fact that a positive pacific north uh, um, american oscillation is still expected to persist into the month of february and the fact that it's been so quiet on um, this winter so far that it's uh, th that th um this january so far that it's unlikely to last into february as well i do believe that february is when we'll experience our next major winter storm we need to pay close attention to that winter storm that could build maybe right around the 22nd of january that the european model wants where the european model wants to bring a pretty significant nor'easter but i'll keep you guys updated once the certainty um rises with that forecast but i thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather lake content